Here's your WNEM TV5 news update. Good evening, everyone. I'm Meg McLeod. Here's a quick look at the stories we're following tonight. Another jump in COVID cases as the state continues to see numbers climb. Tonight, the state is reporting more than 4,400 reported cases, along with 16 new deaths. That brings the state's totals to more than 637,000 cases and the death toll to 15,935. This morning, the Mass Vaccination Center at Ford Field in Detroit officially opened to the public. A FEMA representative says the clinic will administer up to 6,000 doses per day. It's run by Meyer, and starting April 5th, all Michigan residents 16 and up will be eligible for a vaccine. The Shiawassee County Health Department is in need of medical and non-medical volunteers to assist with upcoming mass vaccination clinics. All volunteers must fill out required paperwork and pass a background check. If you'd like to apply, head to the Wednesday hot link section on WNEM.com. The state is moving to revoke the license of a private juvenile detention center in Saginaw County. Investigators are said to have uncovered physical abuse and safety violations at Wolverine Secure Treatment Center in Buena Vista Township. They did not disclose details. The state is finding other placements for 35 juveniles. The company that operates the center plans to appeal. The CEO of Wolverine Human Services sent us a statement saying in part, quote, Wolverine Human Services services has a long history and proven track record of providing essential services and treatment to the children in our care and safety is our top priority. We strongly disagree with the state's effort to revoke the license at our secure treatment center. And now here's Brian with a look at our forecast. Thanks very much, Meg. A showery and at times stormy Wednesday afternoon around mid Michigan, courtesy of this very same storm system that we have been tracking ever since it emerged from the Rockies earlier on this week. We benefited from warm temperatures one more time out there today with highs in the 60s and 70s. Part of that was the fuel source for these showers and thunderstorms. But as they exit the area early this evening, we will settle into a dry period, even with some clearing as we head into the overnight period, as this low pressure system finally lifts north of Lake Superior and then exits the region for good. However, the break in the action isn't going to prove to be all that long lived because also at the same time, while this cold front pivots in behind the frontal boundary and or behind the uh, low pressure system, I should say, and starts to drag our temperatures down a bit tomorrow, we have a second storm forming over the Texas panhandle tonight that is also going to rapidly intensify and organize as it then tracks in toward the Great Lakes late tomorrow and on into early Friday morning. This one is going to prove to be more of a soaking rain, but with colder temperatures filtering on in. Some of us may also be in line to see a bit of a wintry mix. So hour by hour forecast for this evening. Showers and leftover storms gone realistically after about 8 o'clock. We have partly to mostly cloudy skies settling in by midnight, although we're going to have a window more likely of some clearing through that time. The partly to mostly cloudy conditions will persist into tomorrow morning. Morning commute is going to be dry as really will the entirety of the daytime period of our Thursday. We're just going to see more clouds than sunshine as we head toward lunchtime into the afternoon and evening hours. Sitting down to dinner or hitting the road to head home from work tomorrow evening. It's going to be pretty much overcast by that point, but still dry even toward the nine o'clock hour. We may see some light showers gathering along I 69, but most of us are still dry. It's after midnight tomorrow night into the early morning hours of Friday. When that next storm system begins to duck into parts of Ohio, we're going to be on the northern fringe of it, so we'll see this heavier rain back in along I-69, Flint metro area, most of the thumb at that hour as well, and even some lighter rain cresting over the Tri-Cities that'll continue to pivot in toward the northwest into uh, Friday morning. Here's the 8 o'clock hour, for example. Rain will be heaviest and steadiest from the Tri-Cities south and east by the look of it, but I wouldn't rule out a bit more of this wobbling farther to the north for a brief period early Friday for you folks in the north shore of the bay and again with those colder temperatures in place that's where it's going to be that possibility that some of those areas to the north of the bay may see some uh, wet snowflakes mix on in with that rain not enough to accumulate but enough to be a jarring sight after we spent most of the week with temperatures in the 60s and 70s good news though is that like i said this is going to be a soaking rain so we're looking at upwards of about an inch of uh, total accumulation of rain from the tri-cities on south and east as we head into the uh, early morning hours of friday closer to about a quarter to a half inch for the tri-cities and lesser amounts to the 
north. But again, even a subtle shift to the north in the track of the system could bring some of that heavier and in this case beneficial rain farther to the north. As for tonight, though, showers and storms early will give way to variably cloudy skies overnight. Temps headed for the mid 40s and it's going to stay breezy with a southwest wind 10 to 20 miles per hour. Mostly cloudy and dry during the daytime on Thursday, then evening rain developing with a high of 57. That rain continues overnight into the first part of Friday, again, possibly with a wintry mix to the north. High of 48 on Friday and we're back to the 50s with more showers Saturday. Morning rain and snow showers possible Sunday, then a mix of sun and clouds 48. And then the 50s return with sunshine Monday, Tuesday, and another run at the 60s by Wednesday. Remember to tune into WNEM TV 5 on air and online 24 7 for the latest news, weather, and information.